How to introduce a shock collar to a dog? As the name implies, no matter how appropriate the intensity of the static, shock stimulation levels of your dog training collar, we need to make sure that we introduce the concept to our pet dogs carefully and methodically or else we might give them the wrong impression or worse get them to react to this kind of stimulation in a bad way. You've probably heard about the criticism towards a shock collar, right? Some say that these devices may physically hurt dogs or worse have some negative effects on their psychological well-being. But that's not really the case. As long as we are responsible dog owners, who will utilize such a device responsibly and properly then we don't have anything to fear. Shock collars are tools we can use to help us help our pet dogs correct certain behaviors. Shock collar basics. A little bit of background knowledge when it comes to shock collars shouldn't hurt given that we are going to try and introduce it to our dogs. We must be careful of the overall program whether we are looking to use a shock collar for a pup or an adult dog. Basically, shock collars are a part of a few types of electronic dog collars that are available today in the market. E-collars are then a part of the many dog training collars that you may choose from. Choke collars, prong collars, halter collars, martingale collars, gentle leader collars, and pack leader collars are just some of the types of non-electronic dog training collars that you may choose from. Electronic dog training collars may come in the form of an anti-bar collar, invisible fence system collar, spray collar, non-shock collars, and shock collars. Electronic dog training collars may or may not come with a remote. Most shock collars have but usually, bark and fence system collars won't. Stimulation level. All right. Let's start with the most common question when it comes to using a shock collar. Let's say that tone beep and vibrate modes don't work on your dog and also, given that the spray collar also doesn't help get its attention to change its behavior. So right now, you choose to go with static shock stimulation. What level do you choose to start with? Well, naturally the shock level you would eventually choose to use would depend on your dog's temperament. As you probably know, not all dogs will have the same level of stubbornness or tolerance to shock stimulation. The start of your shock training is always crucial. Introduce too high levels then your dog might not respond to the program, while as it might be overcome with fear too low and it will just ignore the stimulus overall. Training Number 1. Make sure to activate the shock collar once found desired levels. Every time, you issue a command to your dog. Once they get used to it then you may stop with the stimulation. Number 2. Every time your dog becomes distracted and won't follow your commands any more then that would be the time to reactivate the collar. Number 3. It's also advisable to keep the dog on a leash at first as you train them with a shock collar. Number 4. Also, activating your shock collar if your dog starts barking excessively and if you call out their name would prove valuable in improving communication between the two of you. Number 5. And once again, we emphasize that you be consistent in your training. It might only take a few months before you don't have to use the shock collar anymore depending on your dog's stubbornness. It's better to be firm now early on in training or while your dog is still a pup than to have a lot of headaches later on due to their bad and uncontrollable behavior. More tips. Number 1. It's actually important that you let your dog wee or the collar first before applying any stimulus and let them be comfortable with it. Introducing shock right away would frighten them with the collar altogether if you do so very quickly. Number 2. Try to mix it up from time to time. Use different training methods with your shock collar so your training would be more effective. Number 3. Learn about the shock collar yourself before administering it. Number 4. Make sure that you've exhausted all minor stimulants that came with the collar first before going for shock mode. Number 5. Lastly, know when you'll need the help of trainers and experts. Sometimes, shock collars won't work too and you will need someone else to step in for you if your dog's 
behavior is too much. You don't want to keep on shocking your dog nonsensically if it doesn't work. This is the part where they get hurt emotionally and physically.